Okay, this is a problem from 15.2 uh, in our textbook. It's called unconstrained optimization. So we're doing optimization in 3D calculus, but we, we don't have a constraint, which if you have a constraint, use Lagrange multipliers, but we don't have that. So we have to use some other tricks, I guess, for lack of a better word, to solve the problem. So this is what, this is what we have. A missile has a guidance device, which is sensitive to both temperature and humidity. The range in kilometers over which the missile can be controlled is given by this function right here. Note to determine a possible domain for H and T first. That helps a lot. What are the optimal atmospheric conditions to, for controlling the missile? Now this is the range of our missile, so we're going to try to maximize the range. Of course, we want to be able to shoot it as far as we can. What are those conditions in which the missile goes as far as possible based on its technology? All right, so we want to maximize R. In order to find the maximum R, we do have to have critical points and endpoints. And since we don't have a constraint, it is a good idea to talk about a possible domain that can be restricted by our um, context. So step one, let's just think about the domain of R. Domain of R. Oops. <laughs> I said R and wrote an R. So H is the easier one because that's humidity. Humidity is is thought of in percentages. So the smallest H will be a zero and the biggest it will be is 100. Now in that case, let's see if we think about the bounds for a uh, temperature. Well, temperature technically can be anything. So we have to delegate from minus infinity to infinity. But oh, something else we can do that it's a good skill to have is look at this equation right here and think about how this guy will behave under these conditions, especially when you have something that can be any possible number out there. Uh, so if I take a look at this, what strikes me as interesting are the dominating terms. Now this is like a 3D polynomial. So this term here, because it's squared, this term here and this term here are the dominating terms, all degree two terms. That means that for large values of t, these guys don't matter. So large values of t and h. Well, technically h isn't going to go anywhere past 100, so t is really the issue. These are all negative terms regardless. No matter what h or t is, these are all negative terms. If I plug in number here for t, even if it's a large negative and I square that, that's a positive number and that makes that whole term negative, always negative. This one's also always negative. <coughs> this one here could be positive depending on if T is negative or not. But since I have two other terms that are dominating, this one still isn't going to be hurt much. So what I see is, is as my T and H grow, or let's just think about T growing off to in positive infinity or negative infinity, this whole thing is going to go down because the dominating term is negative. So that's a good thing to understand about this. Even though I have this great huge temperature, R probably goes down along all edges. So I'm guessing that my critical point is going to be the place of optimization. Now that's my guess. I can show you how to actually calculate that. It'll probably help you out a little bit with other things because not everybody is good at looking at equations like that. Sometimes you need a lot more practice. So I'll show you also how to calculate that. So I've thought about my domain. H has got to be restricted to those uh, humidity and that temperature could be anything. I mean, most likely it's not minus 1 million because that doesn't exist on the planet, but we, we don't really have any way of, of restricting it. I mean, we don't know where we are in the world. All right, so let's go on to step two. So again, I'm trying to maximize R. That means that, <coughs> excuse me, not only do I have to worry about my domain, my endpoints, my ends, I also have to think about the critical points. So step two is find the critical points. 
I tend to write in cursive because it takes me a little less time than it does for me to print. Anyway, I find the critical points and those occur when the gradient of my range is equal to the zero vector. So let's calculate the gradient of R. So if I take a look at my function here, I take the derivative of this guy with respect to T first. So I'm going to say this is equal to R of TH. That'll clear up some confusion. So the derivative with respect to T, that's going to go to zero. That's going to be minus 10 T. I know you can't, oh, you can't see it. Oh, good. This guy is going to be uh, minus 6 H. This guy's zero, that guy's 400. And that guy's zero. All right, let's go to the next derivative. So the derivative with respect to H now. Zero, that's zero, and that's minus 6 T. That's going to be minus 6 H. And that's zero, and that will be 300. So there's my gradient. I have to now solve the gradient equaling zero. That means I solve the system. And I keep reminding you that it's a system that we're solving. It's not just each equation individually. So what I have here is minus 10 T minus 6 H plus 400 equals zero. And minus 6 T minus 6 H plus 300 equals zero. So this isn't really um, a hard one to solve. It's linear. So what I'm going to do is move the T's and the H's to one side and keep the constants to the other. So this, this is going to give me a system that looks like this. 10 T plus 6 H equals 400. And you know, if I do elimination and I leave this equation as it is, I think that will work out best. So minus 6 T minus 6 H equals negative 300. That's going to be the best way to solve it because I can just cancel the 6 H's. So I add the two equations together, the 6 H's go away. This gives me negative 4 T, I'm sorry, positive 4 T equal to 100. So what does T equal? Well, 100 divided by 4 is 25. Okay, that's not too bad. So T equals 25 and I come up with H by plugging 25 back into whichever equation I want to. Um, I'm going to use this one here. So plugging T equal 25, 10 times 25 plus 6 times H equals 400. So 6H equals 400 minus 250. Let me make sure. 10, clear, clear, clear. 10 times 25. I don't do very good doing stuff in my head, especially when I'm videotaping. So I have 6H equals 150. So H is equal to divided by 6, 25. Oh. So T is 25 and H is 25. So that's our critical point. Now, if I wanted to go through the process of calculating the function at the end point and the critical points, this is what I would do. I don't have to use a discriminant. I already kind of have an idea that this is going to be a maximum, but let's make sure. So watch carefully what I do here. I have to actually take the 25, 25 and plug it back into the original function. And then I also have to think about, okay, what happens to my range when T is moving and H is zero? my range when T is moving and H is 100. Now here I'm going to have T moving towards infinity here and infinity here. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. My range as T goes to minus infinity and H is zero. My range as T goes to minus infinity and H goes to 100. Now how do I talk about functions, this guy moving towards positive or negative infinity? Well, I use this idea of a limit. This is a function of one variable. The limit as t goes to infinity, the limit as t goes to infinity. Here, limit as t goes to negative infinity, 
and the limit as t goes to negative infinity. I just have all the possible cases 